So Rosie, we haven't caught up now since 2018. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've been up to since then? I don't know what hasn't happened since 2018. Um, but obviously, before we went, flew off to Heathrow, so obviously went out to Australia for five weeks. Um, had the time of my life out there. Um, four fights and um, an amazing experience with the team at the time. And I think she fell short um, on a split to get the silver medal. Um, what's funny is now, I think, that was a massive driving force and actually was the reason I had so much success off afterwards. Um, as much as I was gutted at the time and it felt slightly unfair, um, I think it was actually a massive fuel in going on and getting onto the British team and, and trying to push that girl off that spot. I think and without that disappointment, maybe I wouldn't have done that and gone on to other things. So, yeah. so do you split your time now here in Sheffield? Yeah, so um, I my home's back here because I moved up here when I was 18. And obviously the Welsh team, you know, I love so much are based here. But like I sort of dip in here sort of on a Monday and we'll have a little bit of time off from Sheffield. And I train up there, live up there four or five days a week. Um, and then I'm based there with the coaching team up there. And um, we have houses up there that we live in. And yeah, that's where, where we're based really. We train from there. And then we've just been to two away camps already this year, Italy and Colorado as well with the British team. So it's been a busy year and things are hotting up now towards the first Olympic qualifier again. So Amazing. Yeah. And is it nice, like camaraderie, good support up there as well? Yeah, it is, of course, it's different because it's, I think what you've got to realise as well, that cultures are different and it's adjusted to that. And that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. And, um, but yeah, I've got good friends up there. You know, you, you, you get your teammates that you really stick in with and it's hard when people move on. That's definitely been hard. Um, this cycle, the last Olympic cycle of guys, I've obviously stayed on for Paris. Um, so a lot of people have left and there's new people come through, but I've got one teammate that's stayed with me through it and um, we share a house and practically share a bed half the time when we're away at some really dodgy hotels. But um, yeah, it's good. You, you know, pull each other through the hard bits and the good bits. And now what's lovely is um, three Welsh lads, um, Garen, Johan and Taylor, are now, um, are now up there too. So it's like a home for home now. Amazing. I was just about to ask you actually, is there many Welsh kind of boxes yeah, up, there? up there? Yeah, there's three now. So obviously we were this um, Commonwealth Games cycle together, you know, we've spent a lot of time together, a bit close, and it's really nice actually now having them up, you know, they've performed so well, they're now on the British team as well, and they're looking brilliant, so, yeah, yeah, it's great. Have you seen much change in the support that you've been given in the last, like, I'm thinking since Lauren won gold, and, um, you know, has there been much of a change in focus towards women's boxing? Um, I'd say of the last sort of decade in general, you know, when I, you know, knocked on the door to my gym, you know, I was turned away the first three times, and not out of malice, just out of like tradition and out of what was normal. So the way things have, have come, like the leaps and bounds. But in terms of Wales and the Welsh team, I've always been treated amazingly. You know, very much if you've got talent and if you work hard, that's more important than anything. Then they'll put that time into you and give you every ounce of their time and effort. And I think that's, I think that's very Welsh, if I'm honest. Like that's very much here. And you know, the, I wouldn't say that's improved anymore. I think it's continued. And the support's continued and, uh, and it's got today, I think. Amazing. Can you just remind me a little bit about how you started boxing, how old you were? Yes, yeah, so I was actually a late starter, so sort of 15, 16. Um, when I was younger, so sort of 12, um, between 9 and 12, I used to run a lot with him. I always dreamt of being an Olympic runner, swimmer, everything, I think. Um, I got injured when I was 12 and didn't really much sport between sort of 12 and 15. Um, and then I... Bought, I saved up for a gym membership and I walked into a box size and and uh, luckily the guy who actually ran it for he had a really mixed martial arts background who could sort of a knowledge of boxing and um, he saw something in me he said you've done this before I don't know and um, I hate the cliche but I put the gloves on and it's like this is what I, I just knew mm. I was like I want to go to the Olympics I've never even seen it on the telly amateur box I've never seen the Olympics hadn't yet happened in 2012 it was, it was 2012 at the time and then obviously the Olympics were on then that year I was even more sure and then there's a bit of a funny story I've already like, spoken about before that um, I knew I would have a bit of pushback with sort of boxing. So um, he said, when you're 16, you can come down to the gym and meet up with me, which is about like, miles away. And um, so I saved up for and that was going to be a nightmare. <laughs> so uh, I saved up and I bought oh, no. I stayed out of my house early in the morning at half three, oh, rode to the gym, trained. <laughs> <laughs> <It's fun. laughs> I was telling him how nice you were. <laughs> All lives. All lives. <laughs> that was common. 
<laughs> it's funny. Well, as I said, yeah, so when I obviously bought the cooking okay. I went out to, you know, got up early in the morning, I used to sneak up the back door of my house, with my moped down the drive and ride for like 45 minutes to the box, got back on my moped, rode back after training, got back into bed for about 10 minutes and I got to school. Wow. Uh, I did it for about two months before I got caught. And then I still went back out. My dad, bless him, he must have had a heart attack, went mad, he didn't live with me. And then eventually they realised I was going to do it anyway. So I sort of joined my local club in Chepstow. And then, uh, bless him, the old coach, he's passed away. I'm first coach there. But um, at first I don't train girls, don't train girls. And then eventually, I don't know what made him let me come down and watch. And then he let me join with the uh, seniors, with the lads. And maybe saw a similar thing to what someone else had seen. And well, it's a funny story because he read me the right act. It's like, first intrigue is like, you bring this, you bring this. If you miss one session, if you do this wrong, I was just nodding. You turn up on time. Blah, blah, blah. And um, did you can't have a shower because there's no shower for you. You can get changed in the kitchen. And um, this little tiny box kitchen where they made a cup of tea. And um, what was funny is over the years went on, I sort of progressed. They moved up stuff. They gave me the back shower room. Then I progressed wow. to a chain room. And I was about to do it with the boys in the end. It was just like one of them. But... Um, so it was nice. You had to earn your place, but I think that was right. And then if I, it wasn't just handed to you. You know, you had to improve yourself. And I think there's something nice about that to prove your worth. And, and I was welcomed with open arms and yeah, massively. How old would you have been then? 16. Okay. So when I joined my club, I was 16. Well, I was 16, I got my mum open. And that's when you said, you know, probably from a protection point of view, to be in your 16, you can come and I'll, I'll train you. This is the original guy. And then I think it was, I turned 16 in July. Couple of months, I think October of 2012, I joined Chepstow and Sea. And I had my first fight for them in the January, which was the novice Raj title. Amazing. Yeah, I, mean, I can't believe that's the point you go now, now I'm 26. And in some ways, it feels like yesterday. Yeah. But then in some ways, you think everything that happened since. And then, like, my nephew's just turned 16, my last nephew, and it, I think I had some guts. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, like defying everyone, but it's funny because at the time, it was just. When something feels like we were meant to do, it's weird. It's like a different pull to other things, and it didn't matter what anyone said. And it's easy to say that, but that was how it felt. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just funny, really. We all laugh now. My dad's good about it now. He just laughs, rolls his eyes, and goes, "I'm blue in no bed," you know. <laughs> but because uh, I remember the last time that we spoke as well, you were juggling university as well, and I think you were working yeah. like a part-time job as well as training. Yeah. That that carried on for us. So when obviously I competed in the games, I came back, I carried on work. I actually started a new job the week after I got back from the games. I worked for Welsh Triathlon for a bit, 20 hours a week. Um, I was doing my last year, of, I was in my first year of my master's and then I got into the GB team. Then things got complicated. <laughs> so I was then going into my last year of my master's full time, which was my thesis and everything else. And the modules I could do while I was at the games. I was working for a a 20 hour week job now commuting eight hours a week to wow. get my back i think i managed to carry on the job for i think about three months into that and they were really understanding i just couldn't do it anymore then i was funded but there's a gap in funding before you can go up to enough so i wasn't earning enough for a while so i was picking up work on weekends and um that was hard i just remember being exhausted like the change of environment getting used to that still working still studying uh, i graduated on time and i got what wow. i got out for my math a distinction and safe to say I've parked education <laughs> but um I was like oh my god I can't believe I did this so uh yeah um but I'm really glad I don't now it's there you know I'm approaching the end of my career now you know it's it's not actually that far away it's, it's just scary to say but I'm really glad I did those things early on and for people to do it for sure yeah. does the pro side of things interest you everyone asks me this so my style's made you know I'm massively high work rate you know i'm a puncher i can hit um so i don't think the program has that much in the girls yet um but it's timing everything's time and my dream has always been commonwealth games and the olympic games and, and from olympics came first i dreamt to be an olympic champion from here eight and that's a dream it's not about money it's not about anything you know it's and i've achieved one doing that commonwealth goal represent my country and that is the second part of it obviously because of what happened with covid i didn't or probably almost like that i didn't get to go to tokyo um so it's meant i signed on for an extra it was three years in the end but um so it all depends on time and when i finish you know the better i do the better opportunities there are but mm. i think being aware that there's a life after boxing and i don't want to look beyond tokyo even though 
I think I'd massively suit that and it is enticing. I think we want to get out the game at the right time and mm. I'll decide that when it, when it comes to it. If I can set myself up for life financially, that makes sense. And I think it would be about that more than it would be about, this is all about dreams, it's about the love of the sport. Mm. You know, and my, my partner, bless him, like, he's so supportive. And I'm away, you know, I've said I've been some, probably I think six days so far this year. Um, and they're not days of home, I've still got to train. So, you know, I'm exhausted. And he supports me 100%, I think. It's our, this is my dream and he supports that. But pro, that should be our decision as a collective. And I think yeah. I've always said that, that that's what we'll decide in 18 months time at the Olympics. Yeah. So I can't say yes, I can't say no really. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll see. And you said the love of the sport. Is that, I was going to ask you, is that what drove, what, what's driven you? Is that it's just to think about what you've gone through in terms of working and your yeah, masters? The injuries and all that. Um, do you know what? It, yes. It, yes and no. I think cause you can't love it all the time. Like, it's really, really hard. The thing that drives me is that dream I had as a, honestly, it's the dream I had as a child and, and seeing that through if I'm being really honest like it's I can't even always explain it it's like I feel like we let myself down if I didn't give absolutely everything to to achieve that and there's amazing days in sport but we actually have this competition for his day who's soft as she works he's a lovely guy works um in the performance team and he's actually talking about this today and he said Chuck we don't realize that 80 percent of the sport is shit it's hard you have really bad days you have massive downs you're low for so long and you're exhausted it's not even that's when things are going right yeah. things are going wrong like I said, i've had two traumas just cancelled you know tokyo i didn't get to go because of what happened that covid and sort of really bad bad not really like and that's when things are bad and you think of all this sacrifice but then there's really amazing food and you know the relationships you create and the experiences you have and i feel so fortunate um but it is hard and I do absolutely love the game but I don't love it all the time yeah you know it's staying disciplined when you don't love it yeah. and then really grasping it when it's good I think that's the best way I look at it would you say that's the biggest challenge facing athletes like I'm thinking of aspiring young girls yeah. coming up now is how you like when we always see the athletes, and I think there's not enough of us watching athletes growing up through the system, we always see the Olympic athletes that have got the gold. And they tell their story, oh, it's hard. You can't resonate because they've already got there. Yeah. They're already there and they've got this gold medal. And we say, well, they've done it. It's easy for them. They're, 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 they're these superhuman people. And they've gone through what I'm going through right now. And, and but when you see a young children, we all entice them. We never tell them, this is going to be really hard. We say, oh, it's hard. But you don't say, what? some really hard things are going to happen you're going to massively question what you do and most people quit because they're not they don't they don't get told that and this is pipe dream and it's going to be we say it's going to be hard but that doesn't get no one has any context mm. but i think if you're real people are like john it's going to be so tough you're going to want to quit. but every time you almost quit every time you have the biggest challenge i always get something from it and then i'm very really saying that's really horrible i always say every time i've gone through something like this I've actually started way better, way better as a person, way more. And I don't mean just in boxing, I've always got a different perspective. I'm like, oh, I think I've got to do that. Like for me, a prime example was, you know, with Tokyo. I got selected for the first qualifier. <laughs> I got selected for the first qualifier, beat my counterpart. I got Drew Russia and I lost on a split decision. Absolutely mortified, like heartbreaking. I then suffered a really serious injury. Um, I was in complete. I had a one three hundred thousand chance of this happening. I got COVID. One of the first people probably to get COVID. Didn't know at the time. Got really sick. And then just as I was feeling better, I woke up with a tiny pain in my neck. By two weeks later, I, drew, I lost most function of my right arm before the Olympic qualifier. Got to the point where the virus had attacked the whole right side of my body. Had um, nerve damage through eight of my muscle groups. I boxed on it, not knowing what was there. It took quite down. It took me nine months to come back. And like, you know, the strength that I'd lost, I couldn't even do a press. I think it was that serious. Um, but I came back from it. And I, at the time I came back and then there's a second qualifier. I went out and competed. I beat the, the European number two. I beat an Olympian. Um, I beat the Russian that I lost to. Wow. And then I found out 24 hours after my first tournament back, when I pretty much knew I was going to that second qualifier, that it got cancelled and there was no second qualifier due to COVID. And instead, they were creating a list um, where only one box from each continent would get selected on a list, and I was second out. Um, 
so I didn't list out in Tokyo. And at the time, to go back to what I was saying, it felt so brutally unfair. It's like, I'm, you know, everything else, I'll learn something. How can I learn from this? Like, what, what do I even get from this? And I was so like, there's, I was so mortified and gutted, and there's nothing I could take from it. But now I look back and I think, do you know what? Maybe that just maybe it just too many things went wrong. Maybe it wasn't happening for me. You know, maybe it gave me a complete almost losing everything gave me a complete different sense of appreciation. Like I almost everything was gone. I was I thought I was career ending because I do no one could find out what it was. And until they sent me to London and did some tests and a different appreciation for what I've got and a different way of working and a smarter way of working and you no know, things don't last forever and they can just be taken away from you. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I have actually got a second shot and Tokyo, no family could go and that matters to me that people, like, I've got seven nephews and nieces wow. and um, they're now old enough to really enjoy it and watch and they love the games, like two of them came and it's brilliant. And I want them to experience the Olympics, I want them to experience, because they've all been part of this and they wouldn't have got that from Tokyo. Maybe I would have got a bronze medal, my sister said, and I would have thought, right now I'll turn over. Maybe I was never meant to get a bronze medal, go out and get gold and mm. everyone to experience it. And I think, in a roundabout way, I think it's always something you get from something that's really hard. Yeah. And I don't think people get told that enough. If you just weather it and keep going, if you give up, then it won't. But yeah, I think that's what people can need to tell like young people at the time and give examples while they're still going for it. And like, for me now, I still haven't achieved my goal yet. Like I've hit markers, you think, oh, that's good, but I haven't achieved my goal. I could not achieve it. No one knows. Mm. And that's hard, not knowing what's around the corner, but then that's also kind of the magic of it as well. So. Yeah, yeah. And was it family and stuff that got you through that difficult time? Yeah, my, well, I was secluded because of COVID. So my partner, my partner I couldn't even get myself dressed because I couldn't raise my mum above here. Like, I was in agony. Wow. Um, absolute excruciating pain. And even in COVID, they're trying to get me for scans and they couldn't see anything. Um, and so they took me and I had like a nerve study, sent my thing electric on my arm, and then it was like all these muscles weren't working. And then some brainiac guessed what it thought he knew it was, and he was right. So it's causing violence. It's normally coming from a ripping of an injury, like a limb. I'd done nothing. It's like, yeah, one in 300,000 or something ridiculous chance. Mm. And I got it uh, three weeks before the Olympic qualifier. But it got worse after. My family were amazing, like, bring them, but. No one could do anything, and that's the thing. Sometimes it's things you've got to do on your own. And yeah. my partner was a massive support, like physically as well. But and when I was coming back, but do you know what? It was it was actually a support system sort of here as well, mm. and they really supported me. And once we knew what it was, like, we'll get you back. We'll get you back. I had a lovely physio called Ed in GB as well as Jane here, and he's like, mate, we'll get you back, and you know, we'll just do this. It's next step, next step. And no one really knew, and I think it's just little small things people would say and. It was more now with family when you're having a really tough time. They ring you. My sister's rang me. I was really strong at the start of the year. I'd have an operation, was coming back. She said, that you can do it. I believe you can do it. And that sounds so stupid, but the fact that she said this, you can do this. And I was like, I've got a friend of four. Oh, yeah, I can. But it sounds so stupid, but it's the way she said it. And I was like, yeah, it's funny. Like, it's weird. But mm. it's just those little things that people say at the right time. It's timing is more than anything. And yeah. Sometimes just being there to switch off and come back and not talk about boxing. Yeah. You know, parts great like that. If he says, Do you want to talk about it? No, let's talk about something else. Let's go for a walk. Let's go. And, and that's just as important as anything. I'm very, very lucky that some great people around. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. How incredible, though, for it to be, because you're known as right hand rows, aren't you? Yeah. And yeah. for it to be your right. Yeah. Like... I was actually glad it was my right because the jab sets everything up. So I was happy it was the right. But, oh, yeah, it was just. The chances is unreal. Like, not many people actually know this, but I actually came back. So I'm um, last year. Um, I got not last year, end of 2021. I got sick. Then I had a vaccine. Then I got COVID and the viral load. So I didn't come back with pain, but I lost function again. Wow. Um, so I had to come back, and luckily it took us six weeks. We knew what it was straight away. We were on it. We um, was really lucky at the start of 2022 with the Commonwealth year. Um, also affected my breathing and things. So it's like, I, yeah, I had an absolute nightmare start of 22. Um, thinking, and they said, they told me it could come back, that the odds were just like astronomical. The fact it came back was just mental. Like, um, so I don't have vaccines anymore or yeah. trying, you know, it was just the amount of load, but you learn. Like, and, you know, I couldn't believe it. That's the thing. Another thing you think, how is this happening? Yeah. Um, but things happen and you're strong and get over it. And family were massive then and like, here, the support coming back here was massive. Um, it's everyone. I'm very, very lucky. I've got some brilliant people around. 
Yeah. And how are you now like, fighting fit? Yeah, good. Like... So <laughs> I had an operation back in November. So again, 2022 was a very tough year. Um, I've had a condition where I've, um, with my breathing for quite a long time. Uh, but after COVID, it got worse. So basically my, you're going to laugh and I think, oh my God, my airway um, would close up by over a third when I train. Um, just the condition, they wanted to operate before, but there's no gap in my schedule. Um, so all the extra gains, I was training on really low oxygen. <laughs> um, it's caused like burning from my body because as I had, didn't have enough oxygen, but my team had got me through it amazingly. Like physios, Colin, like I was in a, a state to ask for my health wise, health wise, it's getting worse. We just had to hold out and I just did just everything the best possible to give me the best piece I could be. And then I had the operation in November and indifference is like ridiculous to actually be able to breathe. So it's just getting worse and worse. Um, and it's not very common. So um, luckily I knew of an Olympic row. They told me they had the operation done. So they gave me a contact. And when she said, just get it done, so the difference is unreal. I think she even got, she took the team and back on. That's how different her performance was. Wow. Um, it was like, I was quadrant quitting boxing because I just couldn't breathe. <laughs> so it was quite important. Um, so yeah, got over that and then started back this year. And yeah, I'm getting back into the I'm not fighting the 100% fit yet, but no one needs to be at the Olympic qualifier in June. Yeah. Um, and that's the big one. First qualifier, get qualified 13 months out. Yeah. And then it's all about the Olympic Games. Amazing. But don't want to take away from last year. The Commonwealth Games actually. It's my life. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you, Rosie.